Hi there everyone, it's been a minute but I am very excited to be able to announce the launch of three new frames today, the AOS 4, UL5 and UL5X V5. These frames all share a common platform which I've been working really hard on and in this video I'm going to be taking you through all of the key features of these new designs on the bench, then we're going to be looking at a black box log analysis so you can see the type of vibration performance that you can expect from these frames, and finally I'm going to leave you with some flight footage so you can see the type of footage that you can capture using these platforms. It's a lot to cover in one video so I'm not going to waste any more time, let's dive right into it. If you're after detailed technical specs, links to retailers, build resources, tuning guides, or 3D prints for these new frames, all of that is available on my website, aosrc.com, and there are links down in the video description. Before we dive into the key features, it's important that you know that these three new frames all share the exact same body. They have the same top plate, the same bottom plate, and the same camera cage up front. The only difference is in the arms. The AOS 4V5 has 4.5 millimeter thick arms designed for four inch props. The UL5 has five millimeter thick arms designed for five inch props and it has this dead cat layout. This means that for both the AOS 4 and the UL5, you'll see no props in view at all with the O3 camera on its widest FOV setting. The UL5X shares the same squished X layout as the AOS 4, but it just extends the arms a little bit for five inch props and those arms are five millimeters thick. With the UL5X, you are likely to see some props in view with the O3 system on its wider setting. So if you're focused on getting a completely clean feed from your FPV camera, I would choose the AOS 4 or the UL5. Now let's look at the key features of these new frames, starting with the camera cage up front. And this is the same 7000 series aluminium and carbon fiber camera cage from the AOS 3.5 and it is an incredibly durable cage design that provides a lot of protection for your FPV camera. But the standout feature of this camera cage is its versatility. You can soft mount the O3 camera using the included silicone gummy, or you can 3D print a slightly firmer TPU gummy to mount the O3, a 19 mm or even a 14 mm FPV camera. If you prefer to hard mount, you can use the included carbon fiber camera plates to hard mount any 19 millimeter FPV camera. And this camera cage provides an enormous range of up tilt. You can go all the way from absolutely you know, negative up tilt, minus 10, 15, 20 degrees, all the way to 60 degrees of up tilt quite easily, and even more if you're willing to remove this top standoff. The camera cage provides complete support for all existing ND filters, for the O3 or the uh, walk snail 4K system. And it's just gonna be a breeze to mount whatever camera you want inside this cage and get the firmness of the mount precisely tuned so that you don't have any jello in your footage. Looking now at the top plate, at the front we have the same 27 by 18 millimeter M2 GoPro mount from the AOS 3.5. And there's also this cutout for an XT60 panel mount connector or a 3D print to hold an XT30 connector, or just manage your battery cable as it comes through the top plate. Moving backwards, we have captive battery strap slots for a normal battery mounting position and also a toilet tank mounting configuration. And moving backwards, we have two additional captive slots for a larger pack. So if you're flying the UL5 with its dead cat layout, you might want to use a larger pack and that's going to want to be mounted a bit further back on the top plate to keep the center of gravity spot on. So you've got a couple of strap slots for that. At the back of the frame, you'll find two M3 standoffs spaced 32 millimeters apart. And this is the same spacing as used on almost every other AOS frame. So you'll be able to find 3D prints to mount an O3 antenna like this one, and also a GPS or crossfire antenna if you want to. If I flip the frame over, you can see how easy it is to build and maintain. We have easy access to all of the stack screws through the bottom plate without having to disassemble any part of the frame. And there are three stack mounting positions in the rear, the center, and the front of the frame for 25 by 25 and 20 by 20 stacks. The center stack, the 20 by 20 is drilled out to M3 because that's more suitable for the racing ESCs and flight controllers that you might want to use with this frame. At the front, we have the camera cage secured by four M2 screws to the base plate. And what that means is when you take the top plate off to do any soldering on this build, the camera cage doesn't budge an inch. So you can do all your maintenance, do your rewiring, anything you want to do, and the camera mounting stays absolutely fixed and secure and just makes it absolutely easy to do maintenance on this. 
Now that we've been through the key features of these new frames on the bench, it's time to talk about flight performance. And we're gonna do that with a black box log analysis. Let's start by looking at the AOS 4. And this is running 2004 motors and it's a three minute long freestyle flight. So very representative of what you would see typically when flying the frame. We've got the roll, pitch and your axes here. And we can see that the level of vibration on all three axes is very low. It's staying completely within the green and there are no sharp spikes that would indicate frame resonances that we would need to be worried about. If we switch to a frequency versus throttle plot, we can see how the power and frequency of vibration vary with throttle position and we can see the motor bands more clearly. So this is the vibration being generated by the spinning props and motors, and you can see it increases in frequency with increasing throttle as we would expect. This noise here is well taken care of by RPM filtering in Betaflight. That's what RPM filtering is designed for, to get rid of this motor noise. What we're interested in is, are there any frame vibrations that we need to filter out using the dynamic notch? And we can see the benefit of the XL technology here that we don't see any frame resonances at all on roll, pitch or yaw. So we don't need any notch filtering applied to remove those. This means that you can run the AOS 4 without any dynamic notch filtering and that saves you a bunch of CPU cycles. But more importantly, it saves you a load of filter delay. And with less filter delay, you get better flight performance because the flight controller is able to react faster to what's happening to the quad. If we move over to the UL5 now, we can see something pretty similar. We get our motor bands, uh, which is to do with, again, the spinning of the motor and prop. And we also get something at the third harmonic, three times the frequency of the motor RPM. And this is because we're running tri-blade props. So three-bladed props, we can sometimes see some noise at three times the motor frequency. Again, this is gonna be taken care of by RPM filtering. In terms of frame resonance and vibration, again, there's nothing to see here. It's completely dark. We don't see any bright vertical stripes that need notch filtering to take care of. This again means you can turn off the dynamic notch with the UL5, even when you're running 2207 motors, which is the biggest motor that I would recommend for this type of quad. And you're gonna get really, really great flight performance with minimal filter delay. And this is the benefit of the XL technology. It's isolating the flight controller from the vibrations being generated by the motors and from the movements of the arms. I'm really proud of the flight performance and design of these new frames, and I hope that you're gonna enjoy building and flying them as much as I do. At the moment, you can get them through CNC drones, but iFlight will be bringing them to retailers in due course. Everything you need is in the links down in the video description, including detailed technical specs, build resources, tuning guides, 3D prints, and of course, links to retailers. If you have any comments or questions about the new frames, I'd love to get your feedback down in the comment section below, and I'll try and answer as many of them as I can. That's all I have for you for today. So as promised, I'm gonna leave you with a little bit of flight footage and maybe an Easter egg at the end. Before I let you go, I wanted to give you an update on product roadmap. So I'm currently working on a 14, 15 and 18 millimeter motor with RC and power, sort of a mini Nova series. And I'm also working on some frame updates for the Cine frames and the AOS 7. Those are the ones that are probably gonna be ready next. I don't have firm dates for when all of these things are gonna be ready to launch. It'll be over the next few months. And I'm trying to balance all of this stuff with some other non FPV projects. So. Thank you so much for all of your support. I really appreciate it. And until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying.